All right, guys, excellent. Welcome to our FitBank uh, Kilimanjaro Leadership Summit uh, prep webinar. We just have just over two plus weeks to go. Woohoo! Come on, guys. I hope you guys are getting excited, as excited as I am. As a reminder, guys, I promise you now, from this point on, wherever we are, wherever our level of preparation is, I want you all to be reassured, and I'm just going to reassure you there isn't a person I have a doubt on. Uh, we just need whatever we need from you to confirm, to have whatever needs to be confirmed put in place. We're waiting for that from Sunil. And, uh, but the mountain is such a thing that the power of group and community, it, you will truly experience what's, what's possible of you and by you and how we can all get to bring out the greatness in each other. So really these last couple of weeks is anything that comes up for you, please flag it, please bring it up as early as you can. So today we have a few special guests that are joining us and uh, some people who didn't know they were, uh, that they were going to be leaders on the mountain already and they're going to be doing some sessions for us to have them uh, join us here. So glad to have a number of us on. Uh, and a quick recap at last week, something that we looked at to set context. We looked at uh, Wim Hof and we looked at how this is just somebody who is able to do something amongst the other guys we looked at last week. Um, whether those are people that are prepared for or unprepared for, we showed the power of being human and the human and the potential of the human body and mind, right? Whether it was the Chilean miners or the, the kids uh, in, the, in Thailand that were stuck in a cave, they had got their body to survive an extreme threat or condition that we perceive as a threat. But something, an example like Wim Hof, all that he does or uses is simply he has mastery and control over breath and they have technique and they have process and their procedure and they have practice. And that's effectively what Wim Hof uh, uses inside of his practice. So I thought it would be apt and timely uh, as I was catching up with each of you guys and my, my chat with uh, Varun a few, a uh, couple of weeks or months ago. And, um, uh, and he shared that he's somebody who does regular practice of pranayam. So some of you might know this, some of you might practice it. Uh, and for those of you that don't, I thought it would be great that Varun does a quick intro of it. But before we go into that, I just want to explain uh, that, um, that one of the biggest pitfalls, one of the most common symptoms of anything that's going to happen to most of us other than body aches, is we will walk and move at a certain pace. And a pitfall is we tend to want to breathe at that pace of motion and movement. And as a result, if we're walking quick or short and sharp, our breath is short and sharp. And when we're breathing in that way, we're not gonna get adequate oxygen to our brain. And most people don't realize that getting a headache or a migraine, migraine is simply that, inadequate regular uh, supply of oxygen to our brain. So we really have to learn on the mountain. And we kept coaching it there. We weren't calling it pranayam. We had a guy that done yoga in the first time and we brought some of those practices to the next one. And uh, it made a massive difference in learning how to breathe deeper and distinct from your pace of walk. So without uh, taking much of your time, uh, we have our very own amazing Varun. So Varun, if you'd like to just uh, very quickly Introduce yourself. I guess you guys can all see him. Please confirm that you can see Varun's uh, little screen there. And uh, this is a beautiful picture of our main man, Varun, as well. So, uh, Varun, over to you. All right. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. Okay, great. All right. Um, well, hey, everybody. I know I haven't particularly been uh, been on these calls, uh, partly because of the uh, the demands of my brother's wedding uh, coming up uh, that just finished this past week. So uh, so I am catching up in many different ways, including training. Um, and uh, just to give you a way of introduction for those that uh, don't uh, know me, I think a lot most of most of everybody on this call does just through family. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, my name is Varun Mittal. I'm, I, I live in Houston, uh, Texas. I have a three and a half year old and a nine month old. Um, we run a couple of businesses here with some partners in Houston. And, uh, the reason why I'm doing this call, I mean, doing this, uh, doing Kilimanjaro is primarily because I figured, you know, life's not hard enough <laughs> as it is. And, uh, and, and thought that I'd maybe put another challenge on, um, 
partly because, you know, you don't really grow when things are easy, you grow when things are difficult. And, and I think the obstacle is really sort of the way to move forward in life. And so, uh, so I thought that this would be a fun challenge. And, and, you know, it's a rare opportunity when everything's pretty much planned for you, and you just kind of join on <laughs> a group. So, so I thought this would be a great time to do it. Um, you know, I wanted to give a brief overview of uh, Brown I Am. Now, I I'm sure almost everybody in this call has had some exposure to Brown I Am in one form or another, you know, growing up. Uh, but uh, just to give like just a two minute synopsis of, of Brown I Am and sort of the, the benefits um, uh, is that Prana means energy and I Am means to expand or control. Uh, and so this practice is both an expansion and control of your energy uh, and inside the body. Now, I've been practicing this for about 10 years uh, and uh, now almost daily uh, in combination with yoga and meditation. And, um, and by no means am I an expert at all uh, in explaining everything that I'm about to explain or, or do I have a deep understanding of the specific yoga uh, or the science behind it, but, um, but I'll, I'll do my best. And, and the biggest experience that I've had with, in, in Brian I am especially, is that uh, most notably that I used to have really bad allergies. Um, you know, I used to take, uh, I, I don't know what the UK equivalent is, but, uh, but, you know, just basically daily allergy medicine. Um, and, and and you know would not be able to sleep well at night etc and almost 90 percent of my allergies went away uh within the course of one year one and a half years and the quality of my sleep has improved so uh so for example a a six hour sleep for me now would be equivalent to feeling like i got seven or seven and a half hours so it was pretty significant that way um and and uh now there's countless benefits of front i am and and you know google you know Pranayam benefits or the science behind Pranayam, they'll point to all the deep information you'd want. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, just how it's going to help specifically with altitude. So uh, it, it really it improves the resting level of oxygen in your blood so that you have more energy and just, and just better regulation of, of your body. Um, you know, so for example, you know, what Ronnie was talking about is that you know, if you're in high altitude for a really long time and then you come down to sea level, uh, your performance at the ground level is dramatically improved, right? Because you're, you're just, your energy's, uh, your body's very efficient with energy. It has a lot of oxygen in it and you're just able to perform a lot more and the lactic acid takes longer to build up. Uh, and so the key difference is that in high altitude, when you do acclimatization, you have more red blood cells in your body carrying the same amount of oxygen per, per cell. Uh, and what you're really doing with Bronyam is you're increasing each individual cell's capacity to uh, absorb oxygen so uh, through through deeper breathing. So I uh, just want to make that point very clear that it's in acclimatization, you increase the number of red blood cells would say, I'm just making a number up, like one unit of oxygen each. But what Bronyam is doing is increasing each cell's ability to hold more than one unit of oxygen. So even at the same level, you're, you have a lot more oxygen per blood cell, which is really important because um, it, you, you'll experience better thermal regulation, uh, improved circulation, improved recovery, less muscle fatigue, all those things. Uh, now the science, again, the specific science, I'm sure like a, you know, a much smarter person than I can, can, can explain the, the why that happens. But, um, but that's kind of the reason why you see guys like Wim Hof who, who were able to climb Everest in shorts and, <laughs> and a t-shirt and things like that because uh, they're just able to take the extreme benefits of this. Um, uh, now, uh, before I continue um, to talk about the practice, two practices, which I think will be really helpful, um, does anybody have any questions or, or, or thoughts? Any questions, guys? So uh, please unmute yourselves. And for whatever reason, not everybody's name is displayed. And if your camera is not on, we can't also see your camera. So I can't. I can tell Jamin's on, Radhika's on, Rami's on, Snae's on, or Snae was on. Is Snae still on? Yeah, I think it was shows. Um, I'll, uh, and, and really what I'll do is um, you can please feel free to like just, you know, post questions to the group and I'll respond to them as, a, as I can. Um, and, and so there's, there's two, um, two methods that I think uh, will be helpful. The first is like a very like, you know, the base method of Ranayam that, um, that maybe a lot of you have already done. Uh, the alum balum, anulum balum breathing, which is the alternate nostril breathing. Uh, 
And, um, and the second is just the deep breathing exercise, which is uh, akin to what Wim Hof uh, has essentially marketed uh, out. And so um, just would the love two to do it, Varun, uh, a quick demo here that we can all practice yeah. together. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm about to explain each one in a little bit more detail. Um, the, uh, the first, there's the just two caveats that I would say is that if you've never done pranayama before um, uh, or any sort of like deeper breathing exercises, uh, the two things to do is one is avoid doing these on a full stomach. Uh, because you're gonna you're you're gonna start developing cramps in your stomach uh, if you if you try to take your breath really deep on a, on a and what happens is as the stomach is full it expands and it reduces the lung and the diaphragm's capacity to really maximize the lungs um, and so that's kind of the main reason why so when it's an emptier stomach the lungs can expand a little bit more and that's the whole point is that, that you know your lungs each kind of have those little tiny balloons in them you want to be have the balloons expand a little bit more so they can expose more blood to more oxygen so um and the second thing is um when you're doing these things don't do anything like like initially at least for the first week maybe uh, if you're going to do it before kilimanjaro is don't do it like um while you're driving or anything because what will happen is if you're not used to it um the you'll hit an oxygen saturation point in your in your in your blood uh, in your body and you'll start becoming lightheaded and you, you don't want to do that when you're driving because if because uh, you may get a little dizzy and stuff so um the first is uh an and uh, what it is is basically it's alternate nostril breathing and I'll, and I'll sit a little bit closer to the camera um and the rest of you can feel and, free to unmute yourselves for this bit if you don't have background noise uh, and, and what, what I would, uh, and here is what, what, this is a very basic practice and you're going to use your thumb and your index finger here. So the, the, it's what you're essentially, what you're doing is you're inhaling through one nostril, exhaling through the other, inhaling through the same nostril you just exhaled out of, and then, uh, uh, exhaling again through the final nostril. And so you in, out, in, out is, is the basic premise. So the way you do it is you start with your thumb on your right nostril and you close it completely. Uh, and, and you're going to inhale deeply and you want to all the way down to where you can't really take any more oxygen into your, into your lungs. Go. And you're going to hold it there for a few seconds, five seconds, six seconds, whatever it may be, uh, and, and until you, you, you're almost gonna feel almost like a little bit of a burning, uh, and then you exhale, put your uh, ring finger on your left nostril, exhale. <laughs> you wanna exhale completely, and then you're gonna repeat it. So you're gonna inhale. Now close, the, uh, close your right nostril. And exhale. And so you're inhaling, holding for five, six seconds. The holding is really key because that's what's really getting more and more blood cells, the oxygen, the improved number of the, the increased oxygen. And then exhaling. So inhale, hold, exhale completely. Inhale, hold, exhale completely. Does everybody get it? Uh, the, the basic premise of yeah. that? And if you don't, just you know, feel free to unmute or, or send a uh, message or something. But I have a question, Warren, on that. Do yes. we, um, when we hold, we hold till we kind of feel that burn. When we exhale, uh, two questions: Are we exhaling as a burst, or are we exhaling a, as a slow count, just like we took it in? And then, second question is: Do we also hold when the breath is out? Uh, yeah, no, great questions. Um, so, uh, so everybody has a different variation of this, and there's actually benefits to each variation. Uh, but for our purposes, just for simplicity's sake, or if you, if it, you know, when we're when you're doing it by yourself, yeah, you're going to kind of inhale, like um, inhale within maybe a count of. It's kind of like a count of six. So inhale with a count of six, hold for a count of six, exhale with a count of six. Now, when you exhale, you don't hold the exhale. So when you exhale, as soon as the breath is out, uh, you're going to go back to inhaling again. Now that's going to be a little bit different than the method, the second method that I'm going to show you uh, in a minute. But uh, but the idea is that um, is that is that you don't want to. Um, at least for the purposes of what we're trying to achieve in this exercise, uh, you're just going to inhale um, kind of naturally, slowly, but just deeply. Uh, exhale completely, 
inhale deeply and exhale completely. And that usually takes, like I said, about five or six seconds uh, going in and out. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Any other questions, guys? And that in, out, in, out, that's considered one set. And you want to try to do, uh, if you want to start practicing, um, and this is a great time actually to practice about, you know, about two weeks before our climb is, is uh, you want to try to do six sets. So in, out, in, out, well, that's one. And then you do that six times and that'll take about four or five minutes uh, in the morning. And, and the best time to do it is like early in the morning, you know, when, cause your stomach is completely empty. Uh, you have a lot of stale air and, uh, and your lungs haven't fully expanded over the night. So you'll immediately feel the benefits of it right away and you'll wake up a lot quicker. Uh, and so, um, so try to do six sets in the morning. It'll take about four or five minutes. And if you feel particularly adventurous or you really want to kind of make a practice out of it, do six sets before you go to bed as well. Now, and the reason why that's important is it does two things. One, it, 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 uh, greatly, uh, uh, improves the oxygen level as you're going to bed and, and, and really, uh, Throughout the night, you'll be breathing more deeply than you would be normally, so you'll sleep better, and your mind calms down. So this is probably the single most beneficial thing I've done for my sleep, is that um, as I've, I've done six, uh, I usually do a little bit longer, but I've, I do about nine sets right before I go to bed. And, um, and it, it won't be visible to you right away, but I guarantee you within the first week, you'll notice yourself sleeping better, like more deeply at night. Um, and so, uh, and if you don't have time, if you're like, hey, I'm in a rush, if you, I don't know if uh, some of you are probably commuters by car, uh, the, you know, once you, after the first couple of times, you can uh, do this by car when you're driving as well. That's usually when I do it. I do it for about 20 to 25 minutes uh, on my drive uh, to work. So that's the first method, first method that's on a loan to loan. And um, the second method is just, it's just a simple deep breathing. There's no... Uh, there's nothing complicated about it. It's just um, it's uh, it's just kind of the way you do it is a little bit more forceful. So uh, you know this is and this is really what Wim Hof his the basic uh, technique of Wim Hof is is that um, you know uh, you, you, what you're going to do is you're you're really you can do this lying down you can do it sitting up but if you're doing if you're doing it sitting up try sitting up with your back straight. So again so your your, your lungs aren't compressed. So when you sit up straight, your lungs have more capacities uh, to to expand uh, without much resistance. So you're gonna take just deep breathe all the way. So if you just take a deep breath, just all the way until your stomach expands completely, and you're gonna hold that for about six to seven seconds. Okay. So inhale completely until your stomach's expanding, and then hold it for six seconds, and exhale completely. Now, once you believe you've exhaled completely, force out even more breath with your stomach. So you want to like, you want to have almost zero air in your lungs, so that you you almost create a vacuum, if that makes sense. So because because once you force all the air out, the body's natural tendency is just immediately try to suck the air back in. So so you inhale. Hold. Now again, push out with your stomach if there's any air left. And you're gonna inhale. So as you notice, as soon as you push out with your stomach and then you inhale, it's almost like you're you sound like you're almost gasping uh, for breath a little bit. So, uh, so that's that's so that's that you know one inhale, one exhale. That's one. That's just one set. And and you'll you'll it, the Wim Hof method actually suggests you do this 30 times. And you, could, you, you would just do this maybe like once a day max. Uh, and um, on the mountain, um, and, and by the way, I'll send some links to these videos um, mm -hmm. afterwards into the group so you guys can have a look. Um, the Unalom Vanalom, I, I couldn't find a video online at least that, that, it, that it wasn't completely ridiculous. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to, you know, I'll, I'll guide you more on the mountain. And I think on the mountains what we'll do is in the mornings we'll do the Unalom Vanalom and, and the deep breathing. And then during each of our rests, uh, rest breaks, like um, whenever we sit down, whatever, I think before we start eating um, or take a break or take a snack or take water, 
we'll do the we'll do the deep breathing for maybe five sets or six sets. And I think what they'll do is very consciously force more oxygen in us and, and help us acclimatize a little bit more. Um, so uh, I, I I know I've been I know I've been talking a lot. Um, so does anybody have any 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 questions so far, or any questions? Period. Any questions, guys? No, this is a this is a smart bunch. No, so, uh, anyways, I have so, a, I have a uh, question, Baron. I'll just wait and see if anyone else has. Please unmute yourselves, guys. With this question: For when we are walking, what is the best mm -hmm. to do as we're in motion? So that's something I do on our treks and on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Is as we're walking, like chip chop, chip chop, chip chop. You know, it's our breath becomes gets to that pace of short and sharp breath. And, what, and that really is one of the biggest causes of getting migraines because we're, we're not getting ample oxygen in. So other than doing this at the start or at the breaks, what's, what's recommended for during? What would you do? Yeah, I, and, and you know, I haven't been in an environment like this to where I, 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 I by no means am I an expertise here, but I think that the, the um, uh, usually the reason why that'll happen is because you, you become unaware of your breathing. Right, and it just sort of, um, uh, and, and and the key is to bring awareness to the breath uh, as we go. So, part part of it is that you know, as your your breath becomes short and shallow, it's it's to the extent that you can always remember, you can come, and maybe we we figure out a methodology that in between the breaks, as we're going, every few minutes or every ten minutes, ten minutes, we just call out, "Hey, deep breathing, deep breathing," because it's the short shallow breaths is what deprives you of oxygen, but deep breathing is the one that replenishes it. So as you're going, as you're walking, it's a, it's, it's just a matter of taking deep breaths and it seems it, it feels uh, unnatural initially because we're just so used to shallow breathing. And, yeah. and so, but, uh, but we're just going to need to, we're just going to need to uh, uh, make it a habit to do deep breathing. And that's why I kind of uh, recommended that even about two, two weeks before uh, you start Kilimanjaro to start these two practices because it'll naturally, uh, you will naturally default to deeper breathing than you would otherwise. Got it. Um, I ask a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, with these um, deep breathing and both these exercises, can we do them while we're walking as well? Or is it better to do it while you're sitting or like concentrating in one place? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and no, that's, that's a good point, Radhika. And what will happen is um, uh, you, you're, uh, sometimes what I'll do is the analom uh, I'll, I'll do that even when I'm like just sometimes sitting or I'm just walking somewhere. I'll just kind of naturally do that. Um, and that's one way to come more consciously deep breathe for a period of time. For example, like if you're doing analom um as you're walking, you're just naturally going to take more breath in than you would have otherwise. Uh, but what, what I would really... Um, uh, practice more is that uh, is 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 the uh, is the um, uh, it, it's just it's just deeper breathing in general. Now you don't have to worry about so much about the holding piece of it. Like you know, you deep breathe and go, and you hold it for five or six seconds because you won't be able to because you're just going to be expending energy that quickly. But what you will want to do is just um, every so often you're just going to be taking much deeper breath. Very you have to be very conscious about it. You have to take much deeper breaths than you would normally uh to uh to intake that level of oxygen uh does that make sense yeah yeah, All right. yeah that's perfect thanks awesome any other questions guys hi ronnie just a quick one this is abba here i don't know if you can i, I know my camera is not working yeah we can hear um, you yeah, thanks. Just a, I think just an observation to say there's all, there's actually like a lot a lot to do, and of course we're now two weeks to Kilimanjaro. Um, this is the what Varun is talking about is something I've read about. I've kind of wanted to do it but never done it. So mm -hmm. I would like the I mean the links that he's talking about would be great if we could have something sent out which we can try, and yes. then hopefully do them with as he's suggesting because it's just that time is short and there's so many new things and new thing you know new training that you want to get on board that if instead of starting too much too quickly and making mistakes i'd probably like to take slowly and see if we can get it right yeah yeah so so varun will share links after this call or later yeah. at some point and uh we can definitely implement but one thing i want everyone to know is um i've brought this on and and, and asked varun to share and do some sessions uh we'll do on the 30th of november the day before we go up, we start the climb. 
uh, just as a good to have. So as a reminder, you have to remember that this isn't a norm or a standard, but when we started doing it in 2014, it stood out for our guide as something he noticed and he thought that was quite unique. And he, he didn't have it that our team would have the success rate we had and we did. And so he said, you know, it's probably got to do with that stretching and the breathing that you guys were doing. So uh, it's a good right, thing. Yeah. But the last thing I would want anyone to think of is, oh God, I got one more thing to do and, uh, and I won't because everyone, I have a lot of confidence in you guys now. So, but Varun, anything else you want to add to that? No, no, I think uh, I, I, you know, I think I've covered a lot here and, um, and to the extent that anybody has questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise we can discuss it more uh, in person and, and you can and I'll send out some links right after this. Okay. All right. Excellent. So um, I'm just trying to check for. And, and, and just, I'm, I'm going to be on mute and, and possibly be in and out uh, because I have another call, but, uh, but please feel free to feel free to continue. Okay, I mean, we anyway have uh, 10 minutes from now left. This is a timed call. It will cut at about 38 past. So um, that said, guys, uh, what we have is I have invited. So thanks so much for that, Varun. That will be really, uh, that's been really useful. And we're looking forward to, again, the links, practicing it before we get there. And I'm looking forward to practicing more with you. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to practicing more with you uh, on the mountain. So really looking forward to that. So uh, do we have anyone that's joined from the 2017 team? Is anybody on? Bonnie, Hannah, Emma? Okay, guys, so we had... Uh, okay. Let me just see, put that on. Okay, so we had guys from the 2017 team that were going to join. Uh, they may not join, one of them was running late out of a meeting. They wanted to join to just share some stuff from their experience at this point where they were two weeks, two plus weeks before going out. But in the meantime, what I want to do is also use these weekly calls to bring what I've called our near misses. So just a reminder now, I want you guys to think of uh, anything that's come up for you this week. I've tried to capture a few here. And if there's something that is, um, that you've come up with or you've remembered uh, to pack, almost missed what we call our near misses, please do share them now. So have a look at these. Um, what I found with my boots as a reminder was that they are now past the waterproof era and something we learned interesting on our, our trek. And I'm so grateful we went back for a bit when it was raining and it was dark and we could have very easily chosen not to do that, but we chose to go back. But I found somebody that joined us on that day. He looked at how to waterproof your boots um, and he didn't have hiking boots, but what he did was he came with regular sneakers and he, he saw online somewhere, he puts a normal sock and then he put glad wrap around it and then he put a second sock, which is quite an interesting concept. It's not something we'd recommend for Killy. We'd recommend that you get proper gear uh, and the right socks for Killy, but it was very interesting that this guy didn't have waterproof shoes or boots, but his feet were completely dry, his socks were completely dry. So uh, just thought I'd share that. Uh, guys, nail cutters, I'm, it is, this might sound like a small thing, but it's so easy for people to forget this, and it's very crucial that you do. Cutting your toenails um, the week before or just the day before is really key and crucial, and if you want to bring your nail cutters out there to cut them the day before, it's, it's key. Um, why is it key? Because it is not uncommon, and I don't scare anyone by this, but it's not uncommon that we will get a few black nails on the coming down part of Kilimanjaro, right? So what happens is we're actually very charged up when we come down and sometimes we get so excited with the pace that we're picking and building as we're running down, but our toes are hitting the fronts of our boots. So that's why it's key that we always said that you always get a one size bigger boot. You are wearing your two layers of socks and there's a particular way we'll show you where you use the top part of your boot to tighten it in so that your um, ankle is completely pulled against the back of your boot, right? As you're coming downhill, especially more so than that's when you will use the final two hoops of your boot mostly to do that. So long it doesn't feel like it's constricting your veins going into your feet. And, uh, and if you don't, there have been people who their nails come off. Uh, we had somebody when we were preparing for 2014, she shared something with, which scared us. And I don't want it to scare anyone, but she was like, um, do it, best thing ever I did. I don't think I'll do it again. Uh, I lost seven toenails uh, and um, she's somebody who 
normally wouldn't do a lot of these outdoorsy things. So that was a big thing for her. Uh, and uh, I'm just flagging that there so that we don't have, we don't come there kind of unprepared. Power banks, guys, as a reminder, so we're going to learn more on the mountain. I'm going to keep reminding everyone, but I'm going to talk about this now. So you start thinking about it. Everything that you're wearing at the end of every night, when you go to sleep and when we're going through um, cold points, and uh, if you're not using your batteries, if you're not using your power banks, you want to keep them layered wherever they are. The last thing you want to do is to keep them hanging on the outside of your bags. Uh, unless you have a solar power bank. The, some people did bring solar, but solar, they're a bit slow. You know, you will, will get sun at certain points. We may not, so they're not 100% reliable. But there were some people that brought solar banks and they were hanging them out of their tents with the cable going into their tents to charge stuff. But the normal power banks, you want to get one that, like I said, has about uh, above 26,000 MHA. I think uh, Bina shared a link of one with 30,000 uh, MHA power. So it's great to, if you can get those one or two, if you want to, but one should be adequate. Uh, I'd only recommend two for those people that are carrying, you know, like a GoPro, your phone, another camera and so on. Otherwise, uh, one should be enough for most of us and somebody amongst us will have two and then there'll be an element of sharing. The last thing you want to do is to overload on power banks. Uh, I, I did a, put a request out there. So I do want to know if anyone has planned on getting a drone you intend on getting a drone or you have a drone, guys, the, the drones now and the, the quality of the drones are really great. Uh, I might buy one at the last minute, but I have zero practice in, in managing and handling a drone. So it will be a bit of learning for me. I will also be trying to, um, you know, zipping up and down with, with the queue of us going to the front of the pack, checking the back, and I'll, I'll be at different points at different times. So I may not be best placed to always be filming stuff. Uh, so if there is somebody that has one, knows how to, then it would be great to bring that along. I cannot emphasize how important it is to really capture this journey, guys. It is, uh, it is truly once in a lifetime for many. I'm blessed to go be going a third time uh, and that it will meet people that have done this 150 times on the mountain. Uh, but it truly is a blessing to be able to do this. And I, you know, I wish we could capture everything. Uh, if we had a large number of people, I was really going to also bring a uh, professional videographer to join us to capture this for all of us. So, uh, you know, unless for whatever reason we choose or anybody wants to bring in one because you want to capture this, then we will have to arrange that as a, as a separate arrangement. But if we had the numbers, then I was going to sponsor a videographer to come. Uh, by that, I mean, if we had about 30 people, somebody's just joined from a galaxy S nine. Is that anyone from the, that's uh, Jayesh Roni. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit late. I uh, had some meetings which I was attending, so I okay. over time. Okay, no so, worries. I, I, am yeah, expecting, I am expecting uh, some of the guys from the 2017 climb, but they haven't yet shown, and I'm not sure why. Okay, so, uh, so that's on drones, and then snacks and Ziploc bags. So, uh, Abba and Jayesh, thanks for sharing your videos. I didn't get to fully watch them. We were, we've been today at a health event we've been speaking at. Uh, for World Diabetes Day, and uh, so I haven't yet got around to seeing all of them. But uh, we will. What's recommended is think about every day. You want to take out one pack from your overnight bag and put it in your backpack, and in there, think of what will be consumed and finished in that day. So I would recommend two or three bounce balls, maybe a couple of oat bars, um, and um, if you want some gels, you can. But about five bars or balls will be adequate. Uh, and uh, I packed about 10 of them and they, they, they served me perfectly fine. They lasted me on the mountain adequately. On a day, if I didn't finish what I had, it was somehow finished on certain days, I would have seven or eight at a go, um, I mean, across the day. And then I also had enough for my safari last time. As a reminder, I won't be going on safari. Uh, this time we, are, we have four of you and I am, we have interest from about two, three other people to join us. So or fit bankers, fit banker truckers from here who might be keen on joining. So I've yet to follow up with them. Uh, I mentioned last week there was a uh, an upgrade in one of the venues uh, within the same venue. They've upgraded you guys to a place that's a lot more uh, luxurious and expensive, about two kilometers, one of their own lodges. So that's an upgrade that's happening for you guys. I'll uh, send you that updated itinerary. Um, and um, insurance. Right. As a reminder, there's two types of insurance. There's travel, if your bag gets lost, and there's a reason why we're keeping a day between 
arrival on 29th and going up the mountain on the 1st. If you lose anything at the airport, if anything goes amiss, immediately fill in a form, a report, whatever you need to do for insurance purposes. Last thing you want to do is to panic. And key thing is to carry your hiking boots in your carry-on luggage or wear them. Do not check in your hiking boots. At a minimum, do not check in your hiking boots. Again, if there's something else that, that you're really particular about, that you really love, like your outermost layer or your, um, or, or your fleece or whatever that you're really a fan of that you just don't want to afford losing, also carry that in your hand luggage. But most things there can be replaced, can be borrowed, they can be hired, uh, they can be bought there on the ground, uh, or we can wait for a day. And just so you understand how things work, if we have to start off on a day and say your luggage has to be picked up from the airport, on the first when we've started going up the mountain, another vehicle will go to the airport, collect your stuff and then bring it over. And overnight they will find us on the mountain where we are and bring it to us. So we have, we have that kind of a team which has got 24 hour on call and will bring us. Okay, and uh, flights and dates, we've really, got everybody's except Sunil's. And I think um, we just have the amazing Hannah who's joined. Hannah. Hello, can you hear me? I can, Hannah. We have less than a minute uh, left and, and nobody else joined from the 2017 team. How quickly, oh. what can you share? This is Zoom call, it's going to cut. Are you guys okay dialing back on for five more minutes for Hannah? Yeah, I can do that. No yeah. Okay, so uh, shall we wrap up here now and let's just dial back on in five minutes on the same link. So if we can all log off because this is going to, to cut. And Hannah, if you can just log back in within a minute, and we'd love for you to not rush it and, and share what you have to share. All right, great. Okay, guys, be back in a minute. Bye. Bye. Bye.